to make sure we're all on the same page in terms of using some of the capabilities of the psych info database to get the information you will need for this course and other courses you may take in psychology from here on. Um, you all have used psych info before the database. You I'm sure used it multiple times in psych 113 and other classes. And I know that uh, faculty members have impressed on you and perhaps you've been in a class where I've been there and I've tried to impress on you how important this resource is in psychology. It is the most comprehensive way to get at research literature in all areas of psychology published from the 1800s forward. It has some limitations like everything, but it is the most comprehensive way to do it. And it's a tool that you need to know how to use. And so that's what we wanna get into with this recording because you will be using it in ways that you have not used it before um, for finding information for this class. I will be sharing my screen with you for the most part during the recording, but before we get into that, I want to just uh, encourage you to ask questions. Of course, you can't do it in a recording here, but I will show you in a bit a good way to contact me by email. But of course, if you have questions, you can talk to Professor Kelty Stephen. If there's a mentor in this class, you'll be talking to that person. Uh, you have questions about using psych info, using other tools in psychology, identifying particular literature, getting the full text, et cetera, et cetera. I, I will always be there to help you. I always got your back. Um, so let's dive in. I'm going to share my screen and uh, we'll get into this. All right. All right, I'm going to go to the library homepage. You've all seen this before. And I'm going to scroll down past the search box to this link that says subject and course guides. And these are the subject guides. And if you've been in a class where I have been in the past, you know that I strongly encourage you to use the subject guide for whatever course or whatever topic you're dealing with at that point in time as your base when you're searching for information. So I'm just going to roll down here to psychology. There it is. And here's that link, which is a convenient way to get a hold of me. So there's my smiling face when I was somewhat younger. And you can email me from this link. That's the best way to get a hold of me, particularly now when most of us are off campus. You can also request a library lab. So if you wanted to set up an appointment with me, say, Kevin, let's meet Wednesday at 2, uh, you can do it this way. If you click into this link, it will get you into a form which will ask you some questions about where you are in your project, which helps me in prepping for the meeting. But you don't have to use this form. You can just email me and ask for an appointment as well. So use this guide as the base from which you launch your searches for information. So let me just mention a couple of things about the guide before we get into the search. Source evaluation is the most important thing that you do in any search for information. And by source evaluation, I mean critically thinking about the information itself, but also critically thinking about the source from which that information came. So it may be uh, a particular journal, yes, but you also want to think of the publisher it came from. It could be from a television show, yes, that's thinking about evaluating it based on that, but also thinking about the network it came from. So, you know, it could be a blog post, it could be a book, and then you think about the publisher, it could be a book chapter. It could be a film, then you think about the film producer and distributor, et cetera, et cetera. So source evaluation, the most important thing you do. This is a topic for a different time, but I'll just point out, we've created some videos you might wanna take a look at on evaluating information in general, on understanding information, because that's an important part of evaluation. Can you actually understand it to be able to use it? And then we have a video here on getting the most out of primary literature. And as you know, 
primary literature is what you're searching for here. It's research studies. It could be called scholarly literature, whatever its term. Uh, this helps you get the most out of that kind of information. In leaving this, I just want to say one more thing. Please do not think that just because you're dealing with scholarly information, primary literature, that you don't have to think about source evaluation. You do. Uh, academic information has been used in a way to uh, misinform, even deliberately misinform people. And this link actually will lead you to a short article from The Guardian about predatory publishers, which is a big problem in scholarly communication right now. And so uh, it would be worth your time if you go here just to take a look at this article. The next tab is define, and these are information resources which help you do these kinds of things. So come up with topics for uh, experiments, for projects, research questions, under, you know, quickly understand very basic concepts, on and on and on, even coming up with search terms, phrases, and names that you'll use later in databases, which in fact we'll be doing here in a couple of minutes. This is a very important step when you're searching for information. Uh, don't forget about it because it can save you a lot of time in the research process. All right, let's get into the identify stage. And this is where we get into psych info and actually doing some database searching. What you're finding through sources like these are primary literature, other studies, evidence to help you answer a research question, you know, refute, confirm earlier research, compare your research findings against other, you know, research done by other people. This is the evidence that you'll need to get to uh, answer your research question. You'll notice that some of the links have qualifiers like OK, better, better, and so on. For Psych 225 and other courses where you're asked to find primary literature, just go straight to Psych Info. If you're dealing with a topic that's in neuroscience or physiological psychology, use this link, which searches Psych Info and some. Uh, databases that will get you into the physiological, neurological subjects. But for our purposes today, and for Psych 225 generally, I would go straight to Psych Info itself. So I'm going to click this button. Now, uh, I mentioned that using the subject guides was a good base for your research. And it's a good base partly because it has the links to the resources that you'll want to use, but secondarily and importantly during this time when we're all off campus is that it, it will authenticate you as a Grinnell student or Grinnell faculty member so that you can access the resource. So coming from off campus and going through the subject guide, you will see the link, uh, you know, initially will take you to a page like this. You'll type in your username and your password, and it's very important that you put your username without the at Grinnell edu part before you click login. And if you have trouble logging in, you can get some troubleshooting information here. So username without Grinnell.edu, password, click login. All right, here we are in the Psych Info database, and I'm going to make the screen just a tad bigger here. So you may find yourself in a situation where you need to kind of go from an early classic foundational study in psychology and trace forward through time how other people kind of following the lead of that earlier researcher have extended, confirmed, refuted that earlier research. And as an example in our uh, sample search here, I'm going to use the famous article by Albert Bandura, Ross and Ross on transmission of aggression through imitation of aggressive models where he experimented with preschool children. And this appeared in the Journal of Abnormal and Social Psychology back in 1961. So the first step in our process is to actually bring up your classic article in the database. So I'm going to type in 
the author's name. This is the first author listed, the primary author, last name. And over here, I'm going to indicate that it's an author. And then I'm going to put in some of the title. You could put in the entire title. You can put in part of it. Put in enough of the title so it's recognized. And in this field here, I'm going to indicate that that's the title. And then just to make sure I get this right article, I'm going to go down to publication date on this date. And this was published in 1961. So last name of the first author listed as author, part of the title in the title field, date of publication, search. And there it is. So I'm just going to click this. And this is going to take us into a database record. And it's important to stop for just a moment here, just to kind of go over what kind of information you get in these records. So this is a record for one journal article, and it's one record of millions of records in the PsycInfo database. There'll be records for journal articles, books, book chapters, dissertations. At the top, we have the title of the article, of course, the authors, the journal it appeared in. That's often called the bibliographic information, the uh, volume, the issue, the date, the pages. And we have an abstract describing in a concise way what the article is about. And then we have various indexing fields. So for your purposes for this class, here are some particular fields of information to keep in mind. First one here is over on the right and it's called cited by, and then it has a number, in this case, quite a large number. I'm just gonna click that. And so it tells us that there currently are 1,186 documents in ProQuest or in these databases that cite our article, the 61 article, in their bibliographies. So this article is in the bibliography of 1,186 other more recent publications. 1,186 is a big number. There are few articles that ever get cited anywhere close to this number of times. But in point of fact, what? Well, let me go back there. In point of fact, this is actually less than half of the total number of times this has actually been cited. So this actually represents, for the most part, um, you know, if you go out beyond the ProQuest databases, beyond PsycInfo, you'll find at least that number of citations to this database in other sources, but that's okay. For our purposes, for this assignment, as we're looking for more current researchers who have followed the, the lead set by Bandura, this is actually our user set. This is the universe of documents we wanna aim for. So cited by is the first thing to take note of. Second thing are these subject headings. And I know you may think subject headings is like the most boring thing in the world. And it may be in fact, but it's very important because subject headings are the glue that hold databases together. These subject headings with particular definitions, particular meanings, represent the major subject content of this particular study. And if I was to click aggressiveness or childhood development or imitation, I would get a list of all the thousands of records in this database, thousands of documents that also have are on these topics. One thing to know about psychology is that these words have particular meanings. And let me just, if I can, um,
I'm sorry here. Should have had this set up. Let me just go to the psychology database again. Let me start another psych info session. In this session, you'll notice, or in this interface, you'll notice at the top, there's this thing called thesaurus. And the thesaurus is where you go to find out what these subject headings mean. So if we put in that heading, whoop, I'm sorry. I cannot type. There we go. If we put in that heading, imitation learning, and click find, you'll see the subject heading right here, and then some boxes. Click the boxes, and you will see what this is, what, what the, the, the official definition of that subject heading. Imitation by human or animal subjects to learn a model's behavior or responses. This also tells us that this particular subject heading has been used in the database since 1967. The previous subject heading that was used in the database to represent this topic was modeling behavior. And they also give you a couple of other subject headings that you might wanna use if you're interested in these kinds of topics. It's important to know what these mean because you may go in and say aggressiveness, I know what that means, but it's officially defined in a very different way or in a subtly different way. And that will impact the kind of information you find. So it's worth your while when you come across a subject heading that seems to be right on your topic to actually go into the thesaurus, see what it officially means so you can be sure you are pursuing the subject that you, that you, that you think you are. All right, go back to our record. So, fields to think about, cited by, subject headings, age. In psychology, the age groups involved in research are very precisely defined. In this particular study, he's working with what are called nursery school children. And they are defined for indexing purposes as, I'm sorry, I lost it here. There it is, uh, childhood birth to 12 years, or preschool age, two to five years. So keep that in mind. So that's another way to help focus your search if you want to use it. Population can be important. If you want to deal with an animal population as opposed to human population. And finally, methodology. What does that mean? What kind of research study was this? This is defined as an empirical study, quantitative study. It could be later on that you want to find someone who's worked on this idea first brought up by Bandura, but has used a different methodology. So instead of empirical study, maybe a longitudinal study. In this database, you can do that by searching on this particular key. So again, if I was at this, I'm going to note cited by, and I'm going to write down the subject headings. I'm going to write down the age groups. I'm going to write down the methodology. Okay, so let's go in and do an actual search. So my goal here is to find other research studies that have initially followed really as closely as possible to what Bandura originally did. And then I'm gonna see at the end, I'm gonna maybe change some things right at the end to go in some different directions. So let's start our search. Our search is going to be started with Bandura's last name, but instead of author, I'm going to look in a different field and choose reference. So that means you're looking for Bandura in the reference field, in the bibliography. I'm also going to add this portion of the title and also search that in the reference field because you know through using the APA citation format that in the bibliography, they have the lead author's last name and the title of the article. So this is how I'm trying to get at my 1186 doc citing documents. And I'm gonna remove this date 
because I want to look for ciders from all dates right now. And I'm going to click search. So I get 490. And you may say, wait a second. We had 1186, and now we only get 490. This is a bad search. Well, there's all kinds of reasons why you'll never get 11, all 1186. One of the reasons is, frankly, that there are mistakes in the database. Not mistakes in the database per se, but mistakes in the way information was entered into the bibliography of an article. And with those mistakes and other things, you're never going to get to 1186. So the goal here is to get at least 40% of that number based on searches I've done. And so getting 490 at 1186, while it's not great, it's okay. So if you get at least 40% of that number, you're in business. Okay, let's modify the search a little more. So we have the ciders of Bandura, those documents where Bandura 1961 is in the bibliography. So here's where we want to get into the subject heading. So I want to type in those three subject headings, aggressiveness, childhood development, or imitation. Notice a couple of things. I put childhood development in with quotes around it because I'm telling the computer that I want this phrase searched as a phrase, one word before the other, as opposed to separate words. And I put these words or in here to say to the computer, I want ciders that use either one or more of these subject headings. So they could use one subject heading, they could use two, or they could use all three. And I'm going to go to this field and search it as, whoop, I'm sorry, and search it as this thing, main subject, because you may have noticed in the original article, it listed it as major subjects. Actually, let me change that. Uh, yeah, major subject. I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong one. I'm going to type that. So we get 91 results. And again, we're following as closely as we can. We have the ciders of Bandura that use one or more of the same subject headings. So at this point, let's look over here on the uh, left-hand side for some other ways that we can limit our results. And one way are those age groups that we talked about before, remember? I'm just going to expand the list. So the original article had an age group, an official age group of childhood, birth to 12 years, and preschool, two to five years. So if I want to find later documents that are following Bandura as closely as possible, I'm going to click those two and click Apply. So I'm down to 69. Now there's other things I can look at here. Um, for instance, uh, publication date. So you notice here that of these ciders, 69, most of them occur since 2000. And I, did, I may have mentioned before that this database began entering cited by information as of 2000. So since 2000, they have been comprehensive in doing it. That's why the biggest numbers occur here. Previous to 2000, they're just entering it as they can. So in, in reality, if all this cited by information was entered, you would see high graph bars for all these lines. But it's a limitation of the PsycInfo database that the cited by information is essentially comprehensive since 2000, but not before. We know that. We can't do anything about it. PsycInfo is still our best resource, so we just have to live with that limitation. But one thing I can do here is I can think about 
a date range, and maybe I'm interested in um, maybe I'm interested in material, say, from the last 10 years. So instead of what people were citing him back in the 60s, I'm more interested what people have been doing lately in terms of extending his research. So I search maybe 2010 to 2021. You may not have seen that, but I, you just type them in the box, click update, there it is. And you get down to 33. So if I was doing this, you know, for an, if I was one of you doing this for an assignment, I got to this point and I've got Ciders of Bandura, use the same subject headings, use the same age groups, published in the last 10 years. The last thing I might wanna do is note that the kind of material I want so if I'm looking for other research studies, I'm more likely to find them as a journal article than as part of a book, which is more likely to be kind of a review source. So I'm gonna click scholarly journals, and that's gonna be my final set. But keep in mind all the possibilities over here, publication types, age groups, methodology. So, you know, empirical study, maybe you're saying, I want to find something that's not an empirical study that's longitudinal or review, or I want to find, a, you know, an interview method. Well, I could click these and find other types of studies that use those different methodologies if that's what I want to define for my research. So you may have a list of 20, and, you know, it's not... At this point, I would go through this entire list. One golden rule of searching is that you try to get a result somewhere between 1 and 50, 5 uh, Clearly, we were below 50 back a couple of steps ago. But when I, but at, at some point, you don't want to cut it down too fine or else you risk losing things that might be of use to you. So at this point, I'm going to stop, and I can go through 20 of them. That's not too many. But I'll just note that as you go along here, you see the cited by number. And while cited by is a rough indicator, it does indicate those articles that may have more impact than others. So let's say we're at this point and we say, you know, I'm going to look at these and I come across this McGuigan article. It's been cited 42 times. I click on it. And I look at the record and I read the abstract. That sounds good. I notice it uses two of our subject headings, it uses both of our age groups. This looks good. I said, I want this article. So I go over here on the right-hand side where it says get full text. I click this and I go to our library catalog. And it says this article by McGuigan, full text availability, either of these, I can click the link There's my article. There I can download the PDF. Uh, let's do another one for a practice. Maybe I this one by uh, Zomakis. Article, Persistence of Early Childhood Physical Aggression. I get my record, again, using two subject headings. I have uh, both age groups. I said, I want to get a hold of this, get full text. Takes me again into the library catalog, a record for this article. Again, this one also is available from Elsevier Science Direct. I can download it and so on. Probably you will find that most and maybe even all of these articles, we will have the full text for. And occasion occasionally you will find articles like this, like Paulus article, where the full text is immediately available. And you'll see a new icon up there to download the PDF. So if we have it, you will be getting the full text in basically one or two clicks. One click, two clicks. 
if you search any of these and find that you're not getting the full text, and I'm just going to pick one here as an example. Let's pretend that when you click get full text, it's not available. It says it's not immediately available to you here through Grinnell. What I want you to do at that point is not look for it anymore. Just copy and paste this information and send it to me at my email address. So you find one where basically no full text in three clicks, and it could be a journal article, it could be a book, it could be a film, could be anything. No full text, no full content in three clicks. Copy and paste the basic information about it. Put it in an email, send it to me, and we will get it for you. Um, often it can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours. If it's going to take more than a few hours, you will receive an email message and it will say, this is what you need to do. And this is how long we estimate it will take. So you will have something to plan on. So no full text and three clicks, copy and paste the bibliographic information, send it to me by email. All right. I think I will stop there. Well, maybe I'll just go back to the search and just reiterate again the options you have to make your search more precise. You know, once you've got that basic set of results, they cited Bandura, they use the subject headings, etc., then you can use methodology, age group other words for your article, all these things like this for the word theory or theoretical to narrow in on those particular kinds of information you're looking for, the particular kinds of more recent studies to see how they have extended or refuted the original work by Bandura. All right, I will stop sharing and just say thank you very much. Again, if you have any questions, please talk to Professor Kelty Stephen. Please contact me by email. I guess you're contacting everyone by email these days. Uh, but please don't spend a lot of time looking for full text. Don't even spend, you know, don't, don't suffer in silence when you have questions. Ask the source, go directly to the information rather than uh, spending a lot of time pounding your keyboard fruitlessly. Thank you very much. Take care. Stay well, and uh, hopefully we'll all be back on campus in person soon. Thank you.